What up, everybody? Welcome, welcome to the Adobe Live. We are back with another Artist Spotlight episode, and we have a talented artist we're going to talk to today. But before I do that, thank you for joining us. If you're joining from the Adobe Live community, what's up? What's up to the chat? I want to just say hello to everybody. What's up? What's up? If you have questions for our artist today, please make sure you put it in the chat. Also, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel. Follow us on the Adobe Live Instagram and all the things that we have, the discords. Make sure you're just up to date. All right. But I want to say hi to the chat. Do we have any fun? We have any fans in the chat? What's up? They said Robert says hi, Simone. So we know what's up. All right. What's up, Robert? <laughs> Hello. Yes. So we have Simone Wilder, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. Yes. Talented designer and lettering artist working with works from uh, Nickelodeon. My God. Um, we. I was trying to say it earlier. We were talking about it. Patagonia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Patagonia. Patagonia. Yes. <laughs> Some notable clients here. I mean, we literally need to get into all of this. Mm -hmm. So I think the first thing we need to get into is just a little bit about your background. Tell us a little bit of how you got into design. Um, and also what, what turned you on to lettering, like, you know, of all the things, you know? Yeah. So as mentioned, I'm Simone Wilder. You can catch me online as Simon and Moose, which is just like a fake made up name I came up with in college and just let it stick. So sorry about that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I So I'm based in Nashville. I have a full time job and I do a lot of freelance on the side, which is where I get to kind of strip my stuff and do the lettering thing. Uh, I think most people maybe know me for this super crunchy style that I employ in a lot of my work. I like to call it deep frying because it's named after my favorite way to cook chicken. Hello. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Cook with the chicken. Oh, yeah. So, it, oh, yes. <laughs> But it's all about just adding, you know, texture and grit and injecting fun in just an easy way, just with the tools that I have at my fingertips, things that are cheap, easy to get, um, it, it, a style really born out of just circumstance and just trying to yeah. make the best of what I have. So, uh, I mean, I feel super grateful that this like crusty, dusty style is <laughs> my sweet spot and I get to use it every day still. Yeah. Do you want to highlight some of your favorite pieces for us? Oh, yes. Um, Please, let's see them. Let me pull up some let's things the off, the old, and all of the <laughs> off the old <laughs> website. Uh, yes. I mean, lately, I will say I've been kind of getting into painting, uh, mm. which is like wild because everything I do digitally is just trying to mimic <laughs> what is happening in the real world. And so yeah. having to go back the other direction back to the real thing is um, very interesting and fun. Uh, I find myself kind of uh, trying to control Z some of this stuff, but you can't do that in the real world. This is, <laughs> this is pain. So you got to go back over it, but this is a I lot of uh, kind of that, that exploration happening. And I'm finding that like a lot of the things that I'm trying in these paintings in the physical world I'm trying to do in some of my digital work as well so it's it's a very nice like back and forth relationship there it definitely feels like your work comes from a very personal space like almost like whatever you're going through you're just like I'm gonna make this the same like this actually be like I feel like you're like me where I'm like this should be on a t-shirt <laughs> <laughs> do you say that to yourself sometimes <laughs> uh I don't put it on a t-shirt because I don't know if well, I'd ever like, wear my own things, but I, right? but I am thinking well, in that, in that way, like right? I have like a, like a thought, if it runs in my head, like 10 times, I'm like, okay, it's time to put, put this in somewhere. the world. Yeah. yeah. Like you have like these really like sayings that are like really relatable here, right? Like take up space, tell me who you are. Like these seems like it comes from a very like personal experiences. Is that what I'm kind of like getting here? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, it's a lot of like, finding myself uh, yeah, <laughs> through some yeah. of these practices and some of it is just like turning cheesy phrases into like cool art and some of it is just like this is a question I'm asking myself at this time of my life and I need to document that so yeah yeah it definitely feels that way I feel like you have some stories behind some of these yeah, there, I definitely can we I, highlight a story <laughs> yeah 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 I mean a lot of this is just like fun little phrases but like this first one is kind of a bit of a catchphrase that I've been um hanging on to the last year just 
I feel I feel like it just reflects what I'm trying to do with my style. Like I like to make things and I have the ability to make things really clean and great and good. But Yeah. uh, I think what makes me special and unique is the the love I have for things that look wonky and exaggerated and weird. So that's kind of Yeah. what's happening with I love to draw letters bad. And I just I also love like poor grammar phrases that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> make no sense yeah. but it's still fun like it's fun to say and it still gets that emotion across I think that's the art part of it, right? Because, like, mm -hmm. it's so subjective to what is bad and what is wrong and what is, like, not legible or not, you know, like, mm what -hmm. is weird, what is funky. Like, yeah those things are super subjective. And you're just like, yeah, if you find it bad, then it's bad. yeah Like... yeah <laughs> yeah I mean I've been I've been talking about my work in in these kind of perceived negative terms lately and like my mom and my friends are like oh no don't say that about your work and I'm like Mm hmm. Yeah. no that's that's what I'm going for I want I want it to Mm. feel kind of crunchy and weird and uncomfortable in places and Mm. still like working through that challenge of making something that is that resonates that is you know somewhat legible and kind of pushing the boundaries of legibility and Yeah. um I don't know just something that gets people excited in a different way No, it definitely feels like the bad resonates with somebody, right? Because we're talking Nickelodeon here. Uh, Yeah, yeah. so like, so can you actually tell us about that story and like, how did they like find you or find this work and like Yeah. maybe what, what piece resonated with them? Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't do a lot of like actual marketing or like cold calling Yeah. or reaching out. I'm just posting like the stuff I want to be making on my Instagram. So when people do come Did y'all across hear that? my work, yeah, <laughs> like, Did y'all hear that? Post your stuff. mm Post hmm your stuff. <laughs> And post and don't just like post like random stuff that you don't actually like or you don't want to make like because that's what people are going to hire you for. So, you know, I was posting some of these like gooey, like groovy, um, kind of vintagey inspired lettering pieces. And they reached out to me and were like, we have, you know, this young rapper. She's about to have this TV show, books, like products, all these things going. And we want to, you know, kind of come up with a masthead for that. So um, they were like, she likes kind of 90s hip hop vibes. And she also, Okay. you know, kind of likes that designer style, like that Louis Uh Vuitton huh. kind of mark. And Yeah. so took some of that inspiration That and came girl up Layla. with a couple assets that are, I Yeah. think, really like gooey, like I said, and groovy, Yeah. but still feel really unique and fun um, and uh, appropriate for the Nickelodeon audience. So, No, yeah. this is amazing. Like I've actually like watched the rapper Lele like come up and like Mm choose hmm freestyles in her car and all that stuff. So Yep. I thought that was really cool that that show, like the way that you encaptured that and her essence, everything into this is dope. Like it's Yeah. super, super, super dope. That was that. So how did that happen? Did they just reach out to you? Like, how did that, how did that happen? Yeah, I think I just got like a random email, you know, from my like the contact form of my website, which are very Yeah. 50 50 sometimes. And I was like, Yeah. this this can't be real. Nickelodeon actually wants to work with me. Um, and then I was just like, I imagine hype you grew for up it. on Nickelodeon as well, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Did you Nickelodeon see that over in your Disney future? all the time. No, I feel like I didn't even know how to dream that big. And when this came in, you know, into my inbox, it's like, oh, I could work with like actual brands people I've heard of and not just like my mom's friend's little small business that's going to go to funk next year. Mm. <laughs> well, we still love Auntie. We still love Yes. Auntie's business. <laughs> We true, still true. love her. She does do great things. However, Yep. Uh, Auntie Nickelodeon is calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. We're None on of the that come thing. up. Yeah. But you've also, I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've also things from, I think it was Target at one point. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I worked You had on something a, come a out. Target and Netflix partnership, which is like, Yeah. I literally was telling uh, my agent, like, I think it would be really cool if this year I could work with brands like Netflix and Target. And then, Mm hmm. you know, a couple of weeks later, I got an email from the Netflix team like, hey, we want to make some stuff for Target. Uh, do you want to work with us? I'm like, yes, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what you mean? Yeah. I yeah. That's actually where I feel like I actually found you or I, I heard about you was through that uh, collaboration and, and that whole thing. Yeah. And I love I'm a big fan of Stranger Things. Mm Uh, hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan. Big fan. So, yeah, to see that was amazing. Yeah. How did that process go for you as well?
Um, it was great. I I mean, they were definitely trying to um, capture kind of that fan energy, yeah. um, which is great because then I get to I got to choose like a quote from the show from yeah. one of my favorite characters, Erica, who's like, she's not in a lot of the show, but when she is on, it's you like- You can't spell America without Erica. Okay. Like- <laughs> <laughs> Those lines are so good, like perfect little yeah. one-liners, and she delivers it great. And so I got to choose this quote, uh, see you on the other side, nerds, yeah. which I feel like, I don't know, I, it just resonates with that whole audience really well. And then I got to yeah. like literally open up the Stranger Things logo file and play yeah. with it and like make, yeah. this, make this in a way that is very much... Um, my thing but also uh, in a style that speaks to the audience so another one of those like dream projects i definitely feel there's some co cultural significance there too right we're talking about little black girls who are seeing mm -hmm. this being a part of it and then having bigger dreams right to especially when i was younger i had i don't think i even knew that design like this was <laughs> you know capable for us yeah. to do you know what i'm saying and then to provide it on that sort of thing right I see that connection there is that something that's important to you in your career yes uh I feel like at this stage of my life like I've I've done a lot of really cool things that I'm excited about and there are definitely moments where I feel like a little burnt out and I'm like do I need to keep doing this like I feel like I've already done some cool stuff but just remembering that I need to show up every day because there's probably a 10 year old somewhere who has never seen someone who looks like us you know, mm -hmm. be in this position. And just for me to show up, like, I don't even have to change the world. I'm probably not going to like change the world. But if yeah. I can change like someone's perception of what is possible, like, yeah, that's the thing that keeps me going for sure. I I love that. If I could change the perception of what is possible. Can yeah. we put a can we put the snaps in the chat? <laughs> can we can we put some snaps in the chat? Because that was a gym. <laughs> I love that. No, let's see if the chat, do we have any questions for Simone in the chat? We got some high, we we said the Nashville piece was, Barbara says the Nashville piece was one of her favorites. Mm. Uh, make them into billboards, someone said. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Billboards. Future mural, possibly. We'll see. Is that something in your future you're thinking about? Like, do you, because you say you're getting into painting. Yeah, I mean, I've I've been doing a few murals and I uh, am excited to just do more. I've Yeah. I feel like every now and then I'm like, is this something I want to keep doing? Cause it is tough on the body, but yeah. I just feel like it's so worth it to like be driving down the street and see and like, something that I painted like yeah. huge. Like that's so no, cool. It is huge. <laughs> <laughs> How do you, I, I, I know that we mentioned like in your, you know, in your style, it's kind of like whatever you feel, right. It's kind of going towards, you don't care whether or not it's bad or good, but uh, what are some things you kind of maybe do to stay ahead of the curve of maybe this ever evolving, you know, digital landscape? Like, how do you feel like you keep up with trends or do you even care to keep up with trends? Um, I mean, I definitely care about the trends and I'm like keeping yeah. my you know eye on what things are doing. But I, I, I think what makes it, you know, continue to work for me is that and this is like so cheesy, but like just doing what I want to do. And I'm, yeah. I have like from day one been inspired by like the Blue Note records mm -hmm. um, of the 50s and 60s, those jazz, you know, mm -hmm. covers. And I think mm -hmm. wherever I'm able to like find that type of energy um, in the real world, that's always going to be my inspiration. Like So like driving through some of the older neighborhoods in Nashville and seeing some of those like ghost <laughs> ghosted signs that are like so old, you're only seeing little yeah. remnants or like some of that character that only exists in hand painted things uh, mm -hmm. like that's always going to be the thing that inspires me. And so yeah. I, I think really the trick is just like, how do I, you know, in 2024 or 2025, how do I interpret that energy? And I think yeah. that's like what keeps things fresh in my style. It definitely feels like you modernize it, right? Like you take your own, you're taking your own spin on it is sort of modernizing it. Right. <laughs> in that yeah. sort of sense. So yeah. it seems like you, your, your, a lot of your inspiration comes from like the, you said the, like the sixties, the seventies. Are you feel like you're you're an old soul in that sort of sense? <laughs> yeah, I, I think as soon as I turn like forty two, I think I'm gonna just like be in the bot. Like my mind is gonna be um, present with my body. Say, like, did you say I, forty? Wait, hold up, rewind. Did you say forty two? 
Yeah, I mean, I got I got a decade or so before I get there, but I just feel like I've been a 42 year old since I was eight. Like, oh, okay. I'm, I'm an old soul. <laughs> I thought you were saying you were 42 right now. Uh-uh, and I was no, going to no, say, no. wait a minute. I said, Simone, wait a minute, because you look good, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, black don't crack, but it don't. I you mean, it, it's it'll start to crack a Give little bit more. I was like, did I hear what I thought I heard? <laughs> Like, girl, wait a minute. What you doing? What's the regimen? What I mean, I'll probably I'll probably look this good at 42. Let's be real. Period. Come on. Let's be real. No, 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 let's let's be honestly real. Like, <laughs> no, no, that's dope. I, I love that. Um, speaking from someone who's all like is also old soul and appreciates a lot of nostalgic things. Um, and just like the old kind of days of things, like especially like um album covers and mm-hmm. like the old the way that they used to do advertisements, like used to have a lot of i would say more personality right like yeah. it wasn't so graphic <laughs> heavy you know as yeah. far as like oh it needs to have this title here left aligned like yeah. you know like I nowadays mean, that's what it is right <laughs> yeah i i feel like it's always just good to remember that uh graphic design and some of these like certain channels and art have existed uh you know longer than computers have and computers mm-hmm. are definitely um a great tool in like making it so much easier and more accessible but people were cutting stuff out with their you know exacto knives and scissors before this and you know they 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 really they knew how to make it shake back then Uh so i think uh i don't know i just think it's wise to be picking up cues from some of the old folks and some of the you know the vintage or old school things absolutely and and putting your own twist right like that's the that's the important part of it Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I want to actually dive into a little bit of your process since we're talking about your style yeah. and just how you go about things. Can we like just see behind, peek behind the curtain is what I say? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so let, uh, let's see what we got going on today. Yeah. So I started out with this sketch and you can already see like I I went in with the pencil and I really got those marks in there. Just that's already a, a level of texture that I'm starting with. So I love that. I've got my wonky weird forms. Yes. Um, and we love the wonky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that exaggeration. Wherever I can mm. wherever I can do it, that's I'm gonna put it in there. Yeah. But the I have dot like, on that eye is like Oh yeah. That's like that's my I'm... <laughs> this year I'm just like, I'm gonna make the dot on the eye just so big. I it, it's just exaggeration and I love the exaggeration. I just love it. Like I yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, to call that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just trying to like fill some of the holes and spaces in ways that maybe don't make sense, but feel yeah. fun. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. uh, so see. you were saying like you, uh, as far as this is a sketch that you uh-huh. did like literally with pen. Yeah. I, what, so you yeah. went oh. ham on that pen. Like that pen. <laughs> Don't have no more ink. Uh, I I am convinced all your pens in in your like there's. Are you a pen thief? You probably a pen thief, ain't it? Mm-mm, no, no, you don't mm-mm, steal pens. I would I would never. Okay, let me. I let do. Me I do. I have to get listening. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I have to get my own stuff because I really do destroy pens and pencils. No, like, I can I'm, I'm using them. No, I can imagine that your pen collection is crazy. <laughs> And I, I feel like you should do a post on your your pen collection. Ugh, I just it would be see. too embarrassing. It's just like Why? my my, Bic, my little big pencil and my uh, wait wait Bic hold pen. up hold up hold up. <laughs> you telling me you're creating this with a a big pen, as in I like mean, just like I mean a, like, I'm using just like any old thing I can find around the house. There's not like a special like proprietary you know set I of tools out there. This. I hope y'all we just use this. whatever we got. We use whatever you have in front of you to create the magic. And yep. listen, when I say I'm a big fan of that, big fan when I say that, <laughs> because listen, sometimes you ain't got it. And that's not to say we ain't got it, got it. Right. But sometimes you just ain't got it in your vicinity. And, mm-hmm. you go, and sometimes you just need to create with what you got yep. in front of you. And I yep. love that. I really Yeah, it, do it doesn't that. need to cost like a, you know, a thousand dollars to make an art piece. Sometimes you just got to. Absolutely. Gotta... 199 you know come on 199 <laughs> come on 199 big pin let me yeah, find yeah. out the big pin is about to go global okay <laughs> <laughs> nah uh, so tell us tell us a little bit about the process we got going on here 
Yeah, so I just included a couple of little texture um, options that I employ pretty regularly. So this first one, I just took, you know, this used old crumpled piece of tracing paper I had, Mm -hmm. threw Okay. it on top of this lettering piece, snapped the picture, Okay. zipped it up to the computer. And so this is kind of a, a typical starting point. Um, Okay. and so a lot of times what I'll do is just, you know, give this the uh, uh, a background a little bit more so that um, let's just do that there. A nice little soft brush. And there's probably quicker ways to do this in Photoshop these days. But again, I like to do do you it down and dirty. Yep. do you listen So I'll I've just. I've learned so much just watching processes from different artist spotlights like I'm like Yep. I and I adapt things too myself like there's some things I just don't do it I'm like hmm that actually sounds like an easier thing to do Yeah. like you know so And it doesn't yeah have to be hard. I, I just try to make it super easy. yeah absolutely whatever works for you you know what I'm saying Yeah. So we love a brush too though <laughs> <laughs> so I've just like brushed out the edges here. And then typically what I'll do is sometimes in an adjustment layer, sometimes in just an extra layer, I'll just boost the, the brightness and the contrast in a way that maybe gets this into more of a black and white situation. Okay. Mm. Okay, So I see what we're doing here. yeah, flavor it however you like. I might actually even throw the black and white in there just to make it a little crispier. Okay. Um, and my method usually is just, uh, this is not a pro tip. This is probably the opposite of a pro tip, but I just like move each lever uh, back and forth until I see something I like. I'm I'm the same way though. When it comes to Photoshop, it's like I just gotta see. Yeah. It's Some it's people, not a plan. some people got like a dialed in process, but I don't know. I gotta see. I gotta see Yeah. when I get there. Cause I you gotta never see know. how I'm feeling. You never know. I gotta see how I'm feeling. I gotta see what the vibe is, the energy. Yep. I feel like that's very artist thinking though, right? Like Yeah. I gotta go with the vibes. Yes. <laughs> I love that. So keeping keeping this going, I'll I sometimes I'll just add a couple extra layers of contrast just to really Love that. push Really get it. it in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I like to combine the layers. So I have this one little thing. And then here's this is my like little secret sauce, which everybody probably already knows this, but I like to select all with a little command A, copy that, hit Okay. quick mask mode, which is Q. Okay. So you see your little Okay. red bar over here. Mm-hmm. And then I'll paste it. So that's Mm. that's my mask. Okay. And I'll hit Q again to get out. And now I have like this isolated piece of lettering that I can just throw on a layer here. So then I can, Okay. you know, kill my background and I've got, you know, this isolated lettering. So then, you know, Wow. if this is like 2015, I'll go get my little outdoor photo of the Pacific Northwest and throw this on top of that. Nowadays, I like to just, you know, get my little, I like to keep it clean, just do like a little inverted back background thing. Uh huh. So that's Wow. It just really like, picked up everything, too. yeah, yeah. And Wow. that's why I love doing it this way, because you just get so much of that. wonky like gross texture and if I I love want to it. I can like come back in here and clean it up and get rid of some of that extra stuff So it's definitely um, a vibe. It's definitely go with the vibes kind of thing. yes That's what yes it feels like. Yes, and I love that. a couple other things I like to try um I took that same image and threw some plastic wrap over it just like literally went into my trash can and grabbed some like thrown out plastic wrap and threw it over the top And you Yeah. can do the same, the same exact thing, that same exact process with that. And you just get some weird little crunchy vibes. And I then, love it, though. yeah, the last, like, main trick, I call this the hot breath trick. So I, <laughs> I always take the picture with my phone uh, Okay. camera. And one time I just, like, hadn't cleaned my camera lens for a while. And I took a picture and I saw that, like, this, you know, all of this extra... like glowy vibe around it. And I was like, oh, maybe I can like use that. So usually what I do is I'll just take my my phone camera, I'll just hot breath on it and just smear the lens a little and then take the picture. And now I have like, You're, you're telling me that you literally are throwing hot breath yeah. on the actual thing. Yeah. And let me tell you what, hot breath is for free. 
that I is for know free. it. I know it. So oh then, I, I mean, I can again do that same process, and now I have like <laughs> this, you know, really glowy. Oh, drop this down here. This like glowy thing. It just has some like extra sauce to it, and you can kind of find the sweet spot. You can play with the levels, kind of push and pull with that. But it just gives you, you know, some grainy, like streaky wow. stuff that, again, you could probably find a way to do this in Photoshop, but this is like so quick and stupid and easy and I love it. But you have to have a story behind it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like all of your all of your pieces have more character because of it, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, it's cool to like, I just wanted to throw this thing effect on it. But mm -hmm. I think another part of it also makes it multidisciplinary, right? Like it makes it. Uh, what do they call it? Like a, a multi, like a um, uh, not necessarily. Um, I'm trying to think of the word here, and I, it is, <laughs> it is like not coming to me right now. That's all right. It'll come to, it'll come to me. However, it, it just there's more multiple aspects to the art piece, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. there's multiple ways that you're using. There's multiple, uh, you know, forms that you're using to create this one piece, right? Yeah. And I think I feel like that art is is lost a little bit right like it gets lost especially in this digital age like and the fact that you even just take one step you're like let me just try this let me mm -hmm. and it's simple things like things you so like every simple. day yeah it's every i mean i used stuff. to i used to like keep it a secret i used to like not tell anybody because <laughs> i was like if they knew how dumb this was they would just like laugh me out of the room but what I made mean, you it's easy what, what made you say like okay you know what i'm gonna reveal it to the world uh, I mean, I think enough people were asking about it and I was just like, maybe this is stupid, but, you know, I just like a hundred people can do this process the exact yeah. same way I do it. And I can even do it a hundred ways or a hundred mm -hmm. times the exact same mm -hmm. way. And I'm still going to get like this really unique, you know, piece and it's going to have all these like little treats, um, you know, embedded in it that you just can't get you know, doing something 100% digital. So yeah. I was just like, whatever, people, we need to share the wealth and like make it easy yeah. for everybody because it just doesn't have share to be that hard. Share the tricks, share yep. share, share the everything. Because at the <laughs> end of the day, no one really can copy like you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the end of the day, I yeah. think that we get into our head as artists, right? Like if we reveal these secrets or reveal these tricks and things, we're like, oh no, somebody's going to, do something with it mm -hmm. and then what you know right. like right. or maybe they're going to judge me because i you know i did something so you know you wouldn't even like think about it right like to do yeah. it you know and i yeah. think it's like we put get in our heads right like about how that i think it's a lot of like perfectionism maybe mm -hmm. you feel like you Definitely. you, you kind of suffer from that a little bit when it comes to your art sometimes even though yeah. it's bad like even though we talk about it being bad right no i mean that's that's like the hardest part to be honest like even when i'm working like on these paintings and i start yeah. out and i'm like oh i'm gonna make this just like so chaotic and crazy and wild mm -hmm. and you know at the end of the day of painting i'm like oh i'm i'm sitting over here just like getting in the weeds and like trying to make it perfect mm -hmm. again i gotta like cool it and just like not be so precious about it so i mean it's a it's a fight but it's it's a worthy fight i think i you know what and i think it's a battle right because i would think it is even harder because you're like intentionally not doing something to be perfect right mm -hmm. but also it's also that battle of is it is it good enough right like i yeah. think we all battle that still even when we are saying like intentionally i'm not trying to be perfect Mm -hmm. I think it's a, it's a lot of pressure, right? I feel like outside pressure that kind of comes into that artist, you know, energy. Do you feel like the, you have those outside pressures sometimes where you feel like you have to make a certain art piece because or, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it comes down to like when I'm sharing it on social, I'm like, what's going to get the most likes? And mm -hmm. I just have to be like, wait, wait, wait. That's not what we do this for. No. We're doing this because I love it and I can't do anything but this I have to like mm. get this out of my system and so I kind of just have to get rid of that idea when I'm making and just just make the stuff I want to make and people who want to see it will love it and people who don't yeah. want to see it they don't have to look at it and that's Listen, that's totally fine go to the dough right that's what I'm saying <laughs> right can hit the, you can hit the dough that's what yeah. you can do I mean I'm just and like I'm not you. for everyone and that's okay yeah you know yeah 
Come on, Jims. Can we put that in? Is somebody getting the quotes? Because we didn't, we didn't. <laughs> the quotes just keep coming. Okay. I feel like you're, you are, you are that person that literally comes up with quotes every day. It has to be. You have uh, to be like walking I'm, around with those things. <laughs> the, I'm, I'm saying these things in my head and I'm not writing like 90% of them down. So they're gone in a second. So, oh, so you literally are like, if it comes, boom, you got to write it down. Like you're one yeah. of those people. You're yeah. Like, if, I can't. if I don't, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> my brain's only so big. I can only hold so many no, things in here. Absolutely. Listen, same, same here. Same here. <laughs> uh, but definitely, I, I mean, it definitely, I feel like I, I feel the same way when it comes to, you know, dealing with perfectionism, dealing with societal pressures of likes and engagement and all of that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but as far as going, I, you mentioned that you um, have like a nine to five and you are also freelance. Tell me about your experience with that and how do you juggle and balance that? Yeah, I I think that I am maybe lucky or unlucky in that I've always done both at the same time. I never just started out full time or just freelance. Um, mm -hmm. I was always doing both just, you know, extra cash um, on the mm -hmm. side was much needed at certain times of my life. And mm -hmm. now it's just my way of doing it. And there have definitely been seasons where I've worked too hard at both jobs and not hard enough in in both jobs and it's uh, been a balance and trying to find that balance but I think what makes it work is obviously having you know receptive leaders at my full-time job who are cool if I need to maybe take a day to you know mm. do a conference or okay. um, or I you know need to do xyz yeah there's that flexibility yeah. there um and in my freelance, you know, it, it, doing freelance gives me a chance to get into the lettering specifically and do it in mm -hmm. a fun way and do it with clients that um, mm -hmm. I really like and enjoy. So uh, I think having both sides is, a, you know, a great way for me to stretch uh, in all the right ways and <laughs> not the bad ways, I guess. I don't know. Do you feel like having that nine to five just keeps that stability for you like you feel like that's kind of what's important for you to keep that and like I guess what I feel like is like when people do have nine to fives I feel like the the freelance part of it makes it feel like fun to them like it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like work is what it, yeah. feels, it sounds like yeah I mean wor work is its own like set of challenges like having right. to navigate you know work culture corporate culture type of thing which yeah. is a which is a really good skill that I mm -hmm. am able to employ like talking to clients and mm -hmm. selling and pitching work and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the doing freelance gives me a chance to straight up do lettering and it, do it with fun people. Um, yeah. So versus yeah. like having to think about it as like work. Cause I mean, yeah. essentially as an artist, like you kind of have to juggle what that, what that looks like. What does work look like and mm -hmm. what does fun look like? Right. Yeah. Like, do you sometimes feel like you, you, well, you said you you're good at it, but is it, does it sometimes feel like the freelance work feels like work or does it always feel like fun? I mean, it definitely feels like work. There are ask, you know, I have to yeah. you know, put things in a deck and I have to present the work to people in a way that, you know, makes sense and yeah. is telling it the right story. But I, I have it set up now for the most part that I have my agent handling a lot of some mm, of the like okay. work e aspects mm -hmm. and I get to just sit down and just draw. And that's kind of the perfect, the perfect situation. Gotcha. I I was checking out the the chat as you were talking, and um, <clears throat> Keys was throwing towels. So I think we was having like literally, <laughs> he, you know, he was just throwing uh -huh. things at you. You know, you'd agree or whatever. So we got some some people. We definitely don't down with the gems in the chat. Definitely. Oh uh, oh yeah, and I, I I was told that Bic is global. Um. I didn't know that. So thank you for letting us know. Uh, <laughs> but I meant, I, you know what I meant. You know uh -huh, what I meant. Uh -huh. We, we, we taking over the, it's, it's already taken over the world, but yeah. Okay. Y'all, y'all get what Vic I was is saying. taking over the art world. Okay. There you go. There you go. Cause it's not, I, I don't mm -mm. even think they advertise for art. It's usually no, like an office lot. depot mm -hmm, or like mm -hmm. staples or something. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, yeah. So, catch, yeah. catch uh Bic at your local art store next year. Just you watch. know what I'm saying? Just watch. You know what I'm saying? And I should, this should be Simone's face right next to it. 
<laughs> like literally, like I did this with my pen, my big pen. Like it needs. You to can be... you can do anything with just like, a little old pen. I'm telling you. So yeah, that we definitely that, and then also. 42 is the age where you can begin to wear your bathrobe exclusively. <laughs> oh, see? Okay. <laughs> see, 42-year-olds know what's up. They're already yeah. living their best life. I'm just trying to get I'm there. I'm trying to get there. I'm uh -huh. trying to... They know. We're trying to get there. <laughs> yes, absolutely. If y'all have any questions, please shot the Jonathan Man in the chat for Simone. <laughs> but yes, I, I love that. Yes. And then also make sure you are following her on Behance. And also uh, at her, make sure you check out her website as well. They're dropping it in the chat. But yes, absolutely. <laughs> I think that if they do that, y'all better pay my girl, okay? Y'all better pay Look, my girl to come up on there and put I'm her ready. next to the poster. Have her in the poster with the big pen, <laughs> okay? <laughs> this is the best brand collaboration I could think of. Let's I, go. Literally, like, I, I really do. <laughs> I know uh, earlier, too, we mentioned just to kind of, like, go back to your inspirations. Um, are there any, like, influencers or mentors or designers that you look up to or have played a significant role in your in your career? Yeah, I so when I was like in high school, before Instagram was a thing, before mm -hmm. Pinterest was a thing, I had to be on like the little design blogs and mm -hmm. um, things like that. And at that time, like the very first letters that I saw were Jessica Hish and yes. Eric Moranovich. And yes. like those were like when I first started out, like my two North Stars and mm -hmm. um and like I've gotten to meet these people and they're like yes. lovely humans. And yes, uh, they are. that's another reason I feel comfortable sharing like my process because they have been so generous to share their process with folks. And, and I've been yeah. able to learn a lot from those two. I also want to shout out uh, Ade Hogue, who is yes. no longer with us, but like he was, mm -hmm. you know, a black lettering artist, which we could probably all be in the same like slack channel yeah. <laughs> with how few yeah. of us there there seems yeah. to be and yeah. to see someone who's you know a couple years ahead of me and really like carving out that space and like laying out the blueprint was such a huge um huge like help to my own career and yeah just like even like like I was saying I'm shy I'm just like always in the corner and Ade was like really good about uh, making sure that I was coming to events and like showing yeah. up and connecting with people. So yeah. uh, to me, those are like, those are the three people I always like have to mention because I yeah. wouldn't be here if like, I didn't see that lettering could be possible. And I wouldn't yeah. be here if I didn't see a black person being in lettering as possible. Yeah. So absolutely, yeah. I could definitely see a lot of influence from him as well in your work. I mean, he was definitely like some, those bold and, just the mm -hmm. way that you kind of use shapes and things like that. And even just the, the sayings, right? Like, yeah. you know, coming from a, definitely the black cultural aspect, you know, of things. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely, I see that a lot. And yeah, I, I definitely see that a lot. But that's awesome. And it's also too, it, it seems like your work also has to be meaningful. It feels like, yeah. like because of that, those influences, you know? Yeah. It and it feel that way. It, yeah, I think I try to make everything meaningful. It doesn't always have to be serious <laughs> mm -hmm. for me, but I think I just need to feel like this, whatever I'm saying is important in some way. And sometimes that's like social justice causes. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's just like stupid little phrases that have been nagging at me and, and feel yeah. like representative of a moment in my life. So yeah, I think yeah. things just need to be meaningful in some yeah. way. In some sort of way. What have you done like a campaign recently that you felt uh, was almost like an impactful kind of thing for you? Mm. Is there anything that was like the most impactful that you've done? Man, I, I don't know that there's been like a specific campaign um, mm -hmm. that has been meaningful to me, but I, I was able to work on some, some lettering um, work, kind of a lettering suite for Planned Parenthood, um, wow. like a couple weeks before the Roe mm -hmm. v. Wade decision came down. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think just like having the opportunity to be involved and in, like, no matter what you feel about that issue, I think just being involved with something at like the height of 
that moment or that topic or issue like that felt just like oh what I'm doing isn't necessarily changing the world but it is like supporting a message that is changing the world for people so yeah yeah I mean I love that. Obviously, that's like the height of important messages um, yeah, in my career. Yeah. And not everything's going to be like that uh, relevant in the moment. Mm-hmm. But that like connection is always important. For you, do you feel like that as far as that type of work is what you feel like you want to continue with? Or are you feeling like you want to like, I, I guess I'm, wa- I'm wanting a, your evolution of what mm. you see yourself going towards because it does seem like it gets more meaningful as you know as time goes on right like yeah. there's more things to be involved with there's more things to create impact and I noticed you kept saying you know changing the world changing the world and it does it definitely feels like you that is like one of your uh things that you want to do like it, it feels like it's, it's something that you've been it's on your mind or maybe you know that's what I'm you know I'm just wondering if the way that you are trying to evolve is going more towards how do I change the world? Or Mm. is it more so like, how do I just put fun things in the world? I mean, I think it's both of those parts of it. Like I, you know, I'm, you know, in my early thirties, so I'm, Mm uh, I don't have this illusion in my mind that I am actually going to change the world. Like I'm not a doctor Mm -hmm. out there. Like, Mm -hmm. you know swapping hearts in people's Mm -hmm. bodies and stuff Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. uh but i do know that just my existence as a as i am who i am what i do like that's gonna change the world like i'm i may not again be like changing laws but if i can show up and be who i am and Mm -hmm. one other person sees that as Mm -hmm. possible for them like that's how Mm -hmm. i change the world or like in my full-time job, you know, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a great employee. I'm a great designer and all that stuff. But I think what makes that feel important is that I'm shifting the culture and making sure that all of my coworkers feel comfortable when they come to work every day. Like that's how I see myself changing the world. And I think my work should always reflect that. So I'm going to just keep making work and I'm going to keep making things that I call bad and dusty and crusty and making sure people know that that's possible and that's allowed. And I'm going to talk about important things when, you know, they're happening and I'm going to talk about stupid things when, you know, that feels right. And I think me just showing up and existing and doing what I do every day, um, that's, you know, how I'm going to change, you know, my little corner of the world, I guess. I, honestly, you got to do with the world that's around you, right? Like mm-hmm. you got to start there and then as it grows, right? It's like you never know who it touches next, right? Yeah. Based yeah. on the vicinity around you. And I love that you have that aspect of just showing up for who you are and, wh- you know, whatever, however you w- show up, that's what mm-hmm. changes, you know, the world around you. And then that changes that person's world and another person's world, right? Yeah. Like it just continues to the next and next person. I feel like you're like a very energy person. Like you, like you're, you go, you're very like vibes. I'm just going, I'm going to make sure that I have good energy when I come. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm, I like to tell people I'm just go with the flow. I've been called chill. I don't know if I'm like actually chill or I'm just like, I'm here. I'm going to make the best of this situation. Um, Yeah. Whatever that looks like, you know, let's, you know, be cool. You know, obviously I get frustrated and upset about certain things, but. For yeah. the most part, it doesn't feel like that that energy is worth it in it's, a lot of ways. It's not that serious. <laughs> it is not that serious. <laughs> that's what I feel like is so I feel like that's really on brand for you. It's yeah, like, yeah. It feels, I feel like that quote really does explain like just the essence of your art, who you are and how you create. Like a lot of mm-hmm. that is like, it's just not that serious. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I love that. Speaking of your quotes, we have a question from the chat from Hank Washington. Uh, what was <laughs> what's the most heart tugging phrase you've illustrated that still speaks to yourself today? Mm. Um, so I have lettered this phrase, um, listen twice, speak once, which mm. is really a paraphrase of like a probably much smarter quote. <laughs> but I think in my in my life, I have found it to be um, very impactful to do more listening than speaking. I think that there are a lot of loud people in rooms and um, a lot of loud energies from folks. And I think that I just serve this world better by hearing 
people like seeing what they're saying, like really knowing it and hearing it. And then, you know, adding to the conversation once I've, you know, got all the information and all that. So I think that's, that's kind of like one of the big quotes that I come back to pretty often. I love that. Definitely because, I mean, being either being a designer as well, you have to be a good listener anyway. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Like yeah. you almost have to be able to find those clarity moments too. like you have to find clarity. You have to find the solution to mm -hmm. the problem most times. And that's what you're doing as a designer. So I, I imagine that like that's that's something that's practiced every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it yeah. is one hundred percent practice, and not just like <laughs> it is a great like creative phrase, but it's also just like in life, great. Yeah, that, like that's absolutely. never going to do you wrong. No, absolutely, absolutely. And then another question: Come on with the questions. <laughs> uh, what was the scariest project you've worked on that mm. you overcame, personal or commission? Oh, oh, bully. Um, yeah, I he's think coming with, he's coming with it. I know. <laughs> Uh, honestly think the hardest or not hardest, but the scariest was probably my first big mural. Um, mm -hmm. just because it's like, yeah, I know how to letter stuff, but do I know how to letter stuff, at a two story scale? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever, um, had to translate, you know, small lettering into such a large space and on a challenging facade, like old crumbling brick building like can i can i make something look clean and smooth and legible uh at that scale and it's the first time i hear you say clean and smooth oh i know <laughs> i know <laughs> she's like no that was I, I didn't mean no, not clean and smooth not clean and smooth <laughs> no, no, i meant dirty and <laughs> dirty and crusty <laughs> but yeah yes. just like uh making work basically in a meeting medium that i haven't you know, or hadn't yeah. at the time done before and yeah. somebody paying me, you know, real currency to make yeah. this thing happen, you know, and that you're like, I yeah, was... I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, shout out to that, you know, that client who trusted me to do it. And, uh, and I did it, you know, I like, yeah. I don't know, like every time I do a mural too, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't have a plan. I'm going to just, <laughs> paint this thing real big and hopefully it looks okay and so far yeah. it's it's been turning out okay so yeah when i tell you simone said go with the flow is who i am that's who i am uh-huh uh-huh uh -huh. i know no other way to be anything i don't know any other way but go with the flow and i'm yeah. gonna do you feel like that comes with like a they say it's like a, a fake confidence when mm. you <laughs> when you agree to do things that you have never done before is it yeah. a fake confidence or is it like i'm gonna just figure it out when i get there like yeah, I, mean, I guess I mean, <laughs> yeah it's just uh i i was raised to do a thing that i have committed to do whether okay. or not like i have the skill or ability to do it i'm gonna find a way to do it right so, right you know, it's, I shouldn't so just say no fake. to things because it's I mean, it, like I don't maybe <laughs> always have like 100 hours of training under yeah. you know, a certain thing, but I'm going to show up and do the thing that you told me I got to do. So, yeah, yeah. I love that because I mean, the, the confidence is key when you got it, when you when people are like, hey, yeah. can you do said thing? Uh, yes. Yes. yes I'm going to try my best. I, I'll tell you that. <laughs> It seems like you probably started your career uh, saying yes a lot. Am yes. I am I correct with that? Yeah. Yes, and I think I probably still have a problem with saying yes too often. Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know when you're when you're starting out, you just have to like whether or not you have the skill or not. And when you're starting out, you probably don't have as much skill. Like you just got to do it because how else yeah. will you gain that? You know that practice, that skill without just doing it. So right. yeah, you just got to say yes. Yeah. You got to say yes. I think we have another question as well. Let me make sure I get all of them. Uh, the listening, listening to the second power. Second, second, well, okay. It repeated what you said. Listening mm -hmm. to the second power and speaking once. Yeah, they're definitely, we get in the gyms. We get in yep. the gyms. Yes, we are doing that. Uh, and then we have, what, where do you see your work evolving into the future? But we kind of, we kind of spoke on to that a little bit, but yeah. I mean, as far as like, are there any like future like 
is there any like clients or any people or corporations that you are dying to do work with besides big? <laughs> I mean, I, I'm always I'm always interested in doing music related projects, which I don't do a ton of just because okay. that is a, a tricky industry to navigate sometimes. <laughs> but artist to I, artist is always tricky. <laughs> yeah, yes, definitely. Um, but I, I mean, I just love music and it's such an influence on my work and just my life. So anytime yeah. I can do that. And then like, anything in hospitality spaces like okay I used to do some work for you know this coffee shop out in California and just seeing your work like on a big neon sign or on you know 100 little packages is yeah so cool so anytime I can yeah. like hold something or stand in, in front of head. like my work yeah. like oh, yeah. such a good feeling I love that definitely oh did we hear that I hope we're putting that into the atmosphere we're putting mm -hmm. that into mm -hmm. the in the universe we're yes. gonna we're gonna grab that back into <laughs> yeah we're, we're feeling all of that oh yeah <laughs> let me see if we have any more for the questions for the chat hold on one second uh let's see uh people are talking i guess uh, to add to question three what kind of projects would you like to see them oh we we literally just said that Brand, okay <laughs> i just wanted to make sure i i, I answered i hope we answered that Keys. Yeah. let me know yeah. if we answered that for you but just making sure Okay, <laughs> but I want to know like how many sketchbooks you have because oh. I know it is by the millions by now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the real question is how many sketchbooks have I actually used? Because I oh, can tell wow. you, I have uh, probably I don't I maybe have like twenty sketchbooks, but I probably haven't used fifteen Not of one. them. Yeah, really? Yeah. So I it's just, more. You I are more them, so like. like whatever is in front of me yeah i mean that's the problem is like if there's printer paper in front of me or there's tracing paper in front of me like that's the thing that's going to get used or the sticky note you know literally so, yeah yeah people were mentioning like getting sketchbooks and i was like i don't think that's some own thing mm -mm. i don't think <laughs> i wish it was because I, I have i have some friends who like they got all their sketchbooks from the last 10 years all lined up and perfect i'm like that would be so cool but Oh, all it, I got me. is notes. All I got is like <laughs> post-it notes uh -huh. and printer paper. Uh -huh. Well, do you collect these things? Like, I feel like those are collector's items at this point. <laughs> I, I feel mean, like it's can we uh, NFT look? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there there are like the a <laughs> there are maybe like a couple that I just like personally liked a lot, and I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm gonna hang on to that just to look back. But yeah. I'm, I'm a lot of them just go to, archiving. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, nah, I don't need it as a really. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, think, what's his if I, if I right? get famous after I die, then people then are really going to have to they're just, gonna go find they're going to have to things. be hunting, hunting. Mm -hmm. Like, well, let's look through her trash. Yeah. Let's see what she's in there. There's going to be some good stuff in there. In the trash. Yeah. <laughs> and it may be like where you like have that crinkled trash mm -hmm. look. Yep. On the actual mm -hmm. like lettering piece, like yep. I found the crinkled paper that Simone <laughs> used in that one piece. Yeah, <laughs> can yeah, you put imagine that? Put that, that in your museum. Somebody's gonna. Yeah. I don't know. I, do you see yourself in like a museum or an exhibit or anything like that? No, I mean I feel like that would be cool, like really cool. Yeah. But I, I mean, I just don't know that like that's the type of work I'm making as much. I would love to. I mean, that is something yeah. I would like to do more in the future. Is just you know, physical paintings and I'm yeah. you know, just trying to like maintain that skill and <laughs> make sure my hands still work after being on the computer all day. Um, no, for but... sure. It kind of, um, I don't, do you know, uh, George F. Baker, the third? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So like, I feel like, because he did almost like this exhibit where it was like just saints, mm -hmm. like literally there was like sayings and things like that. So that kind of like brought me there. Where I was like, I definitely see Simone doing something like that. Yeah, honestly, I saw him do that show and I was like, oh, could I do a show? Like, is there appetite know, for Simone. that? <laughs> I don't know, Simone. I think you should look into it. I think we should call the agent up and say, <laughs> well, how do we make this work? Yeah. How do we yeah. get how do we get this sponsored? How do we get this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that would be that would be tight. I I just feel like there's been a reluctance for like cutesy little lettering phrases in yeah. the fine art world yeah. which is i get that that's cool but uh i don't know i feel like i'm saying something with my work so yeah 
I feel myself like it's all space. legendary. I feel like that. <laughs> so I, as we wrap up, as we wrap up, I definitely want to know what do you have as far as for aspiring graphic designers? Because you got the you got the price. Um, but <laughs> let us like as far as what you would tell them on their journey and just some words of wisdom. I mean, I always hate saying this to people, but practice mm. actually does work like whatever you do do it a lot do it every day mm -hmm. um learn the foundations i always say like knowing the like the foundations those skills like that will open up so much room for you to play the more you know yeah. that stuff the more you know where you can break those rules and like get fun and do all that stuff so be open to experimenting know your stuff do it a lot just practice yeah. so much and I mean, even if like your natural talent it isn't in this thing, if you do it a lot, you will get better, period. Absolutely. I love that. Uh, like you said, practice. It, it doesn't make perfect, right? Mm -mm. But, no. but it definitely makes progress, yes. right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And make sure you all please stick around and join the weekend, the women from uh, Weekend Creative as they test out the new structure reference in Adobe Firefly. That's coming up next. Super cool. I think they're creating mock-ups for their photo shoot. So if you want to see that, please stick around. But Simone, this has been so lovely. I hope you had as good of a time as I had. Of course. Because this was great. And just learning a little bit more about you and your style and your art has been amazing. Please let us know where we can follow you, where everything that we can stalk you at. All of the yeah. things. Uh, I am Simon and Moose anywhere. There is Instagram, web, all that good stuff. Simon and Moose. That's where you can all find right. me. All right. Awesome. Make sure y'all follow Simone. I had a great time. Thank y'all for joining us.